all. This is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. Cell senescence is a state of a cell where it is locked and it is prevented from further replicating or from further offspring production. The benefit of locking a cell in a senescent state is so that it does not produce new cells that may have DNA damage and may become cancerous. Many of our cells, especially in the renewable tissues, can convert to senescence when they are under stress. Over our age, many of our tissues start accumulating senescent cells or the cells that are locked in non-renewable state. And we can say that, well, these cells are sitting there and it is okay, they're just sitting there. The problem is that senescent cells, these rather aging, quickly aging cells, cells that have accelerated aging, they release chemical substances, interleukins, proteases. Proteases are molecules that would break down other proteins. So they release chemical substances in their local environment and modify that environment causing tissue damage. So senescent cells are not just to be looked at to say, it's okay, they are cells that have become acceleratedly old. Just let them sit there. And it is good that they're sitting there. It is good they're not renewing. It is good they're locked because they're not going to cause any further uh, generations, offspring production, progeny production, and hopefully we will not develop cancer. So it's a protective mechanism. However, these gripey little senescent cells are sitting there causing microenvironment to become changed, causing damage to the tissue. So then the question becomes, is there an understanding of how the cells become senescent? Can we block their senescence? Can we keep them from damaging the environment around them? These gripey cells, can we protect them? Can we stop them from damaging the local environment? That is the area of study where a lot of research is going on. This research then uh, correlates with aging, with health in advanced age and longevity. So this is one part of the fountain of youth and fountain of life's search. I would take this series from here the mitochondria and aging. I would discuss some more mechanisms. And then I'm going to take it towards taurine and other molecules that we are talking about nowadays that help with reducing the aging progress and keeping us healthy. So this is really a, a foundation setting for taurine discussion. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> So here, this is drbean.com. If you would like to have more lectures, please go to drbean.com and get access. We have hundreds of more medical lectures here. This is the study. This is a Harvard um, article about the study I'm going to discuss. This is the study. Apoptotic stress causes mitochondrial DNA release during senescence and drives the SASP. We'll talk about this in a second. Then there are some uh, supporting evidences and other studies. So let's go to my drawings. And please realize this study itself is pretty thorough, comprehensive, and detailed. It is a mouse or mice study. So as you can see here, quite a detailed study I cannot go in this introductory dis discussion throughout the whole study. 
So I'm going to go over highlights of the study. And then in the coming days, we will go more in depth. So let's start. <clears throat> so it's a mice study. And sometimes my mouse just stops working. So my apologies. So give me one second. I'll have to just restart this. Um, this program so that it could stop doing what it is doing. So one second, I'll be with you, Ness. And Jiffy. <clears throat> Perfect. So we got it. And let's start again. OK. <clears throat> so here's the study. Apoptotic stress. Apoptotic stress is a stress on a cell that empowers the cell, encourages the internal mechanisms of the cell to kill itself. So the difference of apopto apoptosis versus a normal cell death is that in apoptotic death, because the cell is killing itself because of all the stresses on it, the inflammatory mediators are not released by the cell. So the cell would die but would not activate the immune system so that no inflammatory war starts. So that is apoptosis. So the takeaway here should be that a cell that is under stress could kill itself without further causing more flames around without activating the immune system. So apopto apoptotic stress causes mitochondrial DNA release during senescence and drives the SASP. So let's look at this. First of all, instead of the fountain of life, the fountain of death, what is that? So this is the most important concept to capture. In a cell, that is under stress. Think of any cell, a cell that is in the area of inflammation, a cell that is in a tissue where there is less oxygen, a cell that is in a tissue where there is less nutrition reaching, a cell that is in a physical crushing state, a cell that is in an acidic environment, a cell that is under um, uh, energy or light that is damaging to it, a cell that is in the presence of bacteria, virus, and other such pathogens. So there, uh, a cell that is in the presence of a poison, these cells are under stress. When these cells are under stress, the mitochondria, so I have made this mitochondria over here in a very comic way. So a mitochondria in such cells can become permeable. What does that mean? Imagine in your mind that micro, mitochondria is a bean is a tiny bean-shaped structure. There are thousands of bean-shaped structures within a cell. These mitochondria are producing energy and giving it to the whole cell. They have an integral membrane system. They have their own membranes, mitochondria, and within those membranes, there are two membranes they have. Within those membranes are various assemblies to make uh, uh, energy. In a stress the outer membrane of the mitochondria develops pores in them, develops holes in them. Those holes will allow the products from within the mitochondria to start leaking out. This is the fountain of death. And if we can reduce this behavior, then that becomes the fountain of life. So if you see over here, Chronic senescence-associated secretory phenotypes, or SASP. So my request is please start becoming familiar with these terms. SASP are the products that are released from a senescent cell. As I said before, these can be interleukins, these can be proteases, these can be other damaging pro-inflammatory molecules released from a senescent cell. These are called collectively SASPs. 
these SASPs are the one that cause local tissue damage. And why are these SASP released? It is the mitochondria that is releasing products from within, which would then encourage the cell to release SASP. So at the heart of it is mitochondria. What are the kind of SASPs that cell will release in the environment? Interleukins, chemokines, various growth factors, various secreted proteases. Proteases means they would break down proteins around them. Secreted, secreted insoluble proteins, extracellular matrix, lots of such things. So basically, if I improve this diagram, I'll put a cell outside of this. And the cell is releasing SASPs, which are also a fountain of death for the environment around. Within the cell, there is a fountain of death going on, and that is the mitochondrial permeable membrane releasing mitochondrial components within the cell. Does this make sense? Now, <clears throat> senescent cells in our bodies accumulate during aging and chronic diseases. Imagine that if I am going to live for, let's give it a number, let's say 80 years. From my birth till the 80 years of age, my cells would slowly become aged and my tissues collectively would age till that age, whatever that is. However, if I am exposed to inflammatory states, then some cells that are exposed to the inflammation, they will age faster. They will become senescent faster. They will become the age of 80 years while I am 50. And they would accumulate there. And as I said, they would cause pathologies because they are releasing SASPs. So senescent cells will release SASP. That would cause local tissue damage. Can we stop that? Can we reduce that? And we'll become younger and healthier. And we would have stalling. We would stall our age. Okay. Now, during apoptosis, apoptosis, as I said before, a cell under stress is trying to kill itself. During apoptosis, widespread mitochondrial outer membrane permeability occurs. So this is a little mitochondria I have made over here. It is quite sad here. What it is doing is it has these little holes in it, pores that have formed here. These pores are causing its membrane, outer membrane, to become permeable, allowing the things from inside the mitochondria to spill out. So these holes, these permeabilities, these little um, pores are called mitochondrial outer membrane permeability or MOMP. So when you look at the literature and studies for anti-aging and better health, look for the components, substances, herbs, drugs that would help reduce MOMP, mitochondrial outer membrane permeability. Good. Now, how does this happen? Why does a cell under stress has its mitochondria develop these permeability? And what happens? What is the result of developing that permeability? So let's look at the result. Then we'll see how th this happens. So this is the same mitochondria once again. This whole cell is under stress for whatever reason. Let's say this is inflammation. Mitochondria has developed holes. We'll discuss in a second how. But now what is happening is from within the mitochondria, the nucleus, the DNA of the mitochondria is spilling out. So if you see here the top line, backs and back, macropores in mitochondria are formed. So these mitochondrial pores are called backs and back proteins. What is that? Imagine I'm sitting in this room and this room is a mitochondria. And imagine all the windows and doors are shut off, they're closed. Then all of a sudden, somebody outside produces a pipe-like structure. They go to Home Depot and they buy some products and they 
create a pipe. And then they shove that pipe into the wall of this room and there will be a hole created. So first thing to remember, that hole is not a puncture in the membrane that automatically appears. What happens is outside of the mit mitochondria, that is inside the cell, but outside the mitochondria, so this is the inside the cell, but outside the mitochondria, in this space, let me actually show you that uh, structure for a second here. Let's look at this for a second. This is a stressed out cell. When that cell is stressed out within the cell's cytoplasm, there are proteins that are called back and backs proteins that become activated under stress. When they become activated, they join together, they coalesce together, they conjugate together, and they make pipe-like or hole-like structures. Those hole-like structures then get stuck to the mitochondrial outer membrane and they become the holes in the membrane of the mitochondria. So if somebody said, how will the mitochondria become permeable? Your answer is going to be when a cell is under stress, it would cause the back and backs proteins to become activated, the stress that would cause these proteins to then active proteins to bind with each other to make tiny hole like structures or pipe like structures then those pipe like structures will get shoved into the outer membrane of the mitochondria becoming the holes in the mitochondria so let's go back to where we were here once those holes are produced backs and back micropores or macropores then the mitochondrial DNA or empty DNA, mitochondrial DNA, is released in the cytosol of the cell. That causes the DNA present in the cell from the mitochondria causes in the cell another pathway of molecules of proteins to become activated. That pathway is called C gas sting pathway. That pathway when it becomes activated that causes activation of release of chemical substances as i discussed before interleukins chemokines proteases etc so let's see if you can if you can recall it cell is under stress factor number 1 when the cell is under stress that causes within this cell activation of backs and back proteins. When these proteins become active, they started coalescing with each other, they start, they start to join with each other and they make these pipe-like structures. Once those pipe-like structures are formed, these structures are going to get shoved into the mitochondrial outer membrane and now the outer membrane has permeability. Then from these holes, these pores, the mitochondrial DNA starts spilling out into the cell. The presence of mitochondrial DNA into the cell would cause the cellular damage patterns to become activated. And what they will do is they would cause another pathway to become activated, which is called C gas sting pathway. When the C gas sting pathway becomes active, that causes the release of SASP proteins, interleukins, chemokines, proteases, extracellular matrix, etc. Damaging proteins would come out of this cell. So you put stress on a cell, the cell would release damaging proteins. Internal machinery is in front of you. Good. So <clears throat> now this is an important point. When a lot of mitochondria, there are thousands of mitochondria in, a, in one cell, when a majority of the mitochondria become permeable and start releasing their DNA in the cell, then the cell would commit apoptosis and cell would die. 
the way Harvard article put it, they said, when majority of mitochondria burst inside a cell, the cell would die. But here was a curiosity. The curiosity was, what will happen if not a lot of mitochondria are damaged? What would happen maybe out of thousands, maybe a few hundred are damaged? Now what will happen to the cell? And they found out, that is this study, they found out that if only a few mitochondria, so here let's say this mitochondria is damaged, other are happy, the one that are smiley faces, they are happy, they are okay, but some are damaged. When a cell has some mitochondria damaged, they are permeable, they have started releasing DNAs. This cell would have senescent pathways activated and this cell would be locked into senescent state. It is not dying, but it is not living either. It has been made old. The fountain of death started on it. It is shriveled, it is senescent, it is stuck in that state, it is aged, but it would take its revenge. It would release SASPs in the environment and it would cause the other cells, healthy cells around it to become sick, to become damaged. So minority mop, this is called minor, minority mop. What is minority? A smaller amount of mitochondria and mop is mitochondrial outer membrane permeabil permeability. So minority mop results in cell senescence. So somebody said from today's talk, what is your takeaway? There are two takeaways. The cell stress causes the mitochondria to become permeable. If majority of the mitochondria has become permeable, the cell would die. If minority of the mitochondria become permeable, the cell would become senescent. That senescent cell is now going to take a revenge on its brothers and sisters around it and release chemical substances to damage them. Clear? So now, this study, some more important things. Of course, the, the other takeaway that I want to have, this is a huge study. I'm not going in detail for all of that. I'm, I'm presenting to you the core of the study. In this study, they did something that is very interesting. What they did was they found a therapeutic product which could inhibit the pore formation. So those proteins, backs and back, they were able to block those proteins from becoming active. And they saw that the senescent cell production reduced those cells that were even senescent. Their senescence was cleared away. The cells stopped killing things around them. The cells stopped releasing SASPs. And the tissues became healthy. So here in this study, they say, we find that inhibition of MOMP in vivo, and this is a mouse study, so in vivo here means mouse, decrease inflammatory markers and improves health span in aged mice. I see a comment here from Jessel that is saying autophagy. In a senescent cell, autophagy and mitophagy both get arrested as well and do not occur or become dysfunctional. So the cell is just trapped in a sick state and, stop, and stuck there. Now the researchers say our results reveal that apoptosis and senescence are regulated by similar mitochondrial dependent mechanisms, the mechanism that we just discussed, the, the permeability. If all majority of the mitochondria have that, the cell would die. So that is apoptosis. If some of them, some of the mitochondria develop this problem, then senescence would occur. And that sublethal mitochondrial apoptotic stress is a major driver of the SASP. So this sublethal, that is the cell has not died, it is living, got stuck in senescence, that causes the cell to release SASPs, which cause the tissue damage. We provide proof of concept that inhibition of my mom induced inflammation may be a my mom 
induced inflammation may be the therapeutic route to improve health span. They actually used the Bax inhibitor molecules to inhibit these macropore formations and they cleared the senescence and they made this, the mice healthier. So here they say, in another part of the study, cellular senescence refers to the irreversible growth arrest that occurs as a response to different stressors. Senescent cells secrete multiple factors collectively known as the SASPs. Senescent cells accumulate during aging and chronic disease. We are all accumulating them over time, disease or not. And then if we have chronic diseases, inflammatory diseases are mostly chronic, then we are going to get more senescent cells. Senescent cells accumulate during aging and chronic disease and clearance of the senescent cells alleviate several age-related pathologies in mice. These cells therefore represent promising therapeutic targets to prevent age-related disorders. The reason I'm discussing this is I'm building your foundations to understand mitochondria's role in aging, senescence, and in inflammatory states so that we can talk about taurine and some other molecules. Now, this is another study talking about back and backs. Back and backs are members of the BCL2 family, that is a type of proteins family, and core regulators of intrinsic pathway of apoptosis. These two proteins that would become a pipe and get shoved into the micro, uh, uh, mitochondria's outer membrane and create holes, these are actually part of apoptotic protein uh, uh, class. Their job is to actually cause internal damage, which would then cause a cell to die. Upon apoptotic stimuli, when a cell is under stress and the cell is being told by the signals of its own that, hey, we are in under really lots of stress, we should just die. Upon apoptotic stimuli, they, they are activated, who they back and backs. And oligomerize, oligomerize mean many molecules of these combine together. And oligomerize at the Mitochondrial oligomerize is one molecule, polymerize is many molecules. Oligomerize the mitochondrial outer membrane to mediate its permeabilization, which is considered a key step in apoptosis. Now, <clears throat> I have skipped over the whole mechanisms about various parts of this uh, pathway that I showed. I want to show you how they treated it. So in their study, they say, inhibiting MOMP improves health span. We next assessed whether mitochondrial DNA release and the SASP could be suppressed using pharmacological inhibitor of MOMP. We investigated this small molecule, Bax inhibitor or BAL1. So remember there was backs and back. So they brought in a molecule that might become a drug tomorrow that can block backs, which inhibits conformational events in backs activation, preventing backs mitochondrial translocation and oligomerization. So conformational change mean a protein that changes itself uh, because of some um, electrochemical influences on it. And the activation is, of course, activation of the molecule and then oligomerization becomes, uh, you know, stuck to the mitochondrial membrane. Aligning with published data, Bax inhibitor treatment had a protective effect against BH3 mimetic induced cell death in back knockout cells, but not in back knockout cells, consistent with the back specific inhibitory effect. We next, so essentially they, it helped. We next investigated whether BAI1 impacted senescence. So one, it was helpful. Now they wanted to see, can it help against senescence? 
BAI1 was effective at preventing mitochondrial DNA release, Bax activation, and the SASP in MRC5 and IMR90 secrete senescent human fibroblasts. So yes, it was able to reduce the mitochondrial release. That means it was able to reduce the membrane permeability. And of course, that would help. Senescent cells treated with BAI1 were also more resistant to AB263 induced cell death. So they were healthier plus they resisted cell death. Further supporting that anti-inflammatory effect of BI1 in senescence was due to Bax inhibition, we found that inflammation induced by transfection with herring test DNA in human fibroblasts occurred independently of Bax and blast. So no worries. Finally, treatment of senescence fibroblasts with Eltromo, Eltrombopaga, an FDA-approved drug that directly inhibits Bax through a different mechanism from BI, was also effective at suppressing the expression of several SASP factors in senescent fibroblasts. So they had a BAX inhibitor molecule and that worked, and they had an FDA approved drug, the Altram Bopag, Bopag Altram, Altram, Altram Bopag, which was also helpful. These results prompted us to investigate pharmacological inhibition of my mom as a therapeutic approach targeting senescent cells during aging. We treated aged 20 months old mice with BAI1 for three months. We found that treatment with BAI1 ameliorated age-related decline in neuromuscular coordination as demonstrated by a significant increase in rotaroid latency and improved performance in the poll test in which BA1 treated animals were able to maintain balance for a significant longer duration of raised rod. BA1 treatment improved forelimb grip strength in old mice and delayed the progression of age-associated frailty symptoms. Notably, BA1 treatment improved the health span of aged mice without affecting the lifespan. So then if you go to the study, I, I have it till here, but if you go to the study, you would see that they looked at the osteoporosis of the bone that was reduced by this inhibition. They looked at the strength of the bone. So the bone breakability had reduced. They looked at the neurological tissue and that, and the um, health of that tissue and that had improved. So they had done various tests. Let me just very quickly go there. So here I showed you this part and this part, but if you see here, then they looked at musculoskeletal system. They looked at femur and cortical bones. They looked at inflammatory factors in whole brains, etc. So they did a lot of further research to figure out what was going on. So we found that pharmacological inhibition of my mom through Bax inhibition inhibits the SASP and improves various parameters of health span. Although inhibitors have potential off-target effects, we found that genetic inhibition of my mom also inhibits the SASP in vivo. So we are done. I'm just going to give a quick summary and then we Close down and please make sure that you share this with others and like as well and maybe put a comment. YouTube algos like these things and I'll earn some pennies from that. <laughs> so, a cell under stress, healthy cell under stress, activates signals within itself, which are called apoptotic signals. Those signals cause activation not all of them only cause this. There are many pathways within the cell that start. But one of the pathway <clears throat> is that backs and back proteins become activated. These protein, when they become activated, they are like little pipes and they would migrate towards the mitochondria and get stuck in their membranes. This causes permeability 
of the outer membrane of mitochondria. The result is even if the mitochondria is healthy, the mitochondria did not want this, but their, but their outer environment is under stress. So now the mitochondrial DNA will start spilling out in the cell cytoplasm. Cell cytoplasm has sensors that will detect this mitochondrial DNA to be present outside. It should not be here. And they would start the C gas sting pathway. Another pathway of proteins will become activated because of this foreign DNA present in the cell, foreign coming from mitochondria. This pathway would cause the cell to start releasing SASP in the environment, outer environment. So outer environment put the stress on the cell. The cell started releasing chemicals in the environment. Chemokines, interleukins, proteases, extracellular matrices. These things that these molecules that are released would start causing damage plus would cause inflammation. This may be a situation where if this cell had died of apoptosis, it would have been better because it would not sit around and cause damage to others. But because this was a minority mitochondrial damage, the cell got senescent and is now bitter and now is releasing things that are causing local environmental damage. Now that damage caused by SASP is, depends upon what tissue the damage is occurring in but it would cause tissue dysfunction. And that causes various pathologies. In this study, they were able to find two drugs or two molecules that were able, those two molecules were able to block the activation of these proteins and production of permeability of mitochondria in a stressed cell. And they saw that the cell became clear of senescence and the tissue became healthy. So that is the discussion. We will continue on this path for some more lectures because I want to discuss taurine. I know there are so many other videos about taurines, but I want to set up our grounds before we understand how taurine helps us. So with this, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share. There are links in the description. You can get access to Dr. Bean if you like these kind of works and you can support these here as well. So thank you very much. Have a nice weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.